the Cohasset Advisory Committee meeting of Tuesday, October 29th, 2024, um, at 7.53 p.m. So we're not that far off schedule. Um, so could I have a roll call, please? Mary McGoldrick? Mary McGoldrick here. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi here. Vince Thornton. I'm here currently, Vince Thornton, but I do have to leave shortly to... Uh... I, I know, <laughs> I know. Um, Order Mark another Cameron. Eagle Scout. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron here. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy here. That's awesome, Vince. <laughs> and Mike Barclay. I like to do my... So let's just make sure. One, two, that three, four, five, six. We still have a forum. And thank you for hanging in for that first part. I appreciate it, Vince. No, it was interesting. I was, I was watching the pictures on Facebook. So I'm curious what I'm curious what's going to happen with our scout recycling shed. So I'll be up there talking to Glenn. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So I'm going to drop off now. Is okay. That... Thank you All very right. much. Bye-bye, Vince. Bye. 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 Thanks, See you next week, probably. Bye-bye. Yep. Okay. So the first item on our agenda is the review and vote on warrant articles for special town meeting. Um, Michelle, can you kind of guide us through sure. unpaid bills from previous years? Do we know what those are yet? We don't have any. At this oh. time, there are none. Okay. So we whizzed right through that one. Um, Article 5, Community Preservation Committee. Is there anything to discuss on that? So, um, so CPC has um, voted to award um, a couple of different uh, items. So one is from Historic Preservation, and that is the Stone Memorial at Veterans Park. Um, and they awarded $75,000. Just last night, they took a vote to award um, more recreation, which would include the um, replacement of the dugouts at Millican Field, as well as adding some follow posts to the Millican baseball area in the amount of $60,500. Okay, any comments? Um, Michelle? Yeah. Mary, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, just curious, Michelle, are they going to vote on anything else or is this the sum total of what they're going to allocate this fall? To the best of my knowledge, I believe these are the only two items for this okay. fall. Okay. Okay. Anyone else have questions? For the um, for the Millican, is, is there any, are they planning to address any of the uh, infields there, the, the grass, the dirt? So... Yep. So, Mark, as part of their vote, um, the Diamond Club, along with the high school in town, have decided that we are going to maintain the infield portion um, because they were so generous with their contribution that our in-kind contribution is to make sure we maintain that field. Great. Awesome. Okay. Diane? And, and just a little more specificity to Mary's question, which is, uh, are we anticipating? expecting to make a recommendation on this article tonight, meaning it's kind of buttoned up? Yep, I believe so. Okay. Okay. So we're we're looking um, at $135, $500, right? That's correct. Okay. Just and just some clarification that the warrant I think that we have in front of us most likely from ten twenty nine says sixty thousand for the Millican, but it's sixty thousand five hundred. Yes, they voted right. sixty thousand five hundred last night. So that's one hundred thirty five five. Great, thanks. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, then do I have a motion to recommend? The article Article Five Community Preservation Committee's um, funding of the Stone Memorial at Veterans Park for seventy five thousand dollars 
and the Millican baseball field improvements for 60,500. So moved. Second. So that's Mary and Mark. Yep. Okay, roll call please. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. And Gina Stino, aye. So that one is recommended. Uh, next is Article 6, Capital Improvement Projects. Gene. Yes. We have to go back and do four from last week. You know what? Yeah, this. Thanks for catching that. Hold on a minute. Four is. I think we were just waiting on the updated language on that future structure of town government. Okay. All right. Let's go back to four. Let's take four out of order after we go through the ones that are already on the agenda. Okay. So, unfortunately, okay. are you able to vote on four if it's not on the agenda? Um, we can, no. well, no, not really. Yeah, so we'll have, we'll have to put that on for next week. Okay, but let's have a little bit of a discussion at the end so that we know where we are in that process, just so we're good to go for next time. Non-deliberative discussion. Right, non-deliberative, just, you know, information from Michelle, if you have it, okay? All right, so capital improvements projects. Sure, so I can run through these quickly. Um, as you see from the enterprise funds, um, the water enterprise fund is looking to replace the water main on Short Street for $260,000. Um, they're also looking to install a new water main on Cedar Street, um, as well as upgrade the chlorine um, gas equipment at Lily Pond Water Treatment Plant. Um, all of those requests will be funded out of their, the water retained earnings. Um, you also have before you from the school um, special stabilization fund, the design for the Osgood roof repair. Um, I think you've already heard we were accepted into the MSBA. They did indicate that $15,000 is what our portion would be for the design of the roof. Um, so that's what this is. And then the next thing out of the school special stabilization fund would be a new fire alarm system, system for the Cohasset Middle High School. Um, that number has changed. It's it's now one million four hundred one four three. Um, Can you say that again? Sorry. One million four hundred thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you. Um, Any questions? And those those are the enterprise portions. Um, if you go into the general fund portions, we have patrol rifles for the police coming out of capital stabilization. The amount now, is, and I don't know what you have before you in your warrant, is only $17,000. That's what we have. Okay, great. Um, and the airlifting bags are no longer there. I don't know if you have them there. No. Okay. Um, and the only other... And actually, those are the only two items that were voted by Capital last night. So, okay. ex excuse me, Michelle, I've got that. I think it's the most recent warrant up, and the airlifting bags are now coming out of free cash in Article 4? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the rifles? No? Okay. So, do we want to make a motion to... Um, recommend that seventeen thousand dollars be allocated from capital for, for patrol rifles. Sorry, from the general fund. So moved. We have a from second. Cap yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Second. Okay, um, Diane, your hand is up. Did you have another question before we finish the vote? Not on, not on the 
patrol rifles. Okay. All right. So we'll, Thanks. So then we'll do a roll call on that. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. And Gina Stino, aye. So that one is recommended. So Article 16, sorry, we've got all these. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't have a lot of information on Article 16. Um, okay. I can't even find it. There are so many different pages in here. Hey, it's, 40, it's 42 of the warrant we were sent earlier today. Yeah, thank you. I go as far as 40 before I said, I don't have it here. Okay, so article 16. I mean, it's a zoning bylaw. Yeah, wasn't, excuse me, wasn't this something Tom mentioned that they were not going to be taking up until November 6th? In the, in the planning board. That was my recollection from last week, unless I'm thinking of a different article. And that was, our, it looks like that was article 17, because it looks like we voted article 16 last week. Oh, okay. So that yeah. was the, the MBTA zoning? Oh, yeah, yeah. 16. So we don't have to take any action because we already did. On 16, yep. Yeah. On 16, okay. But we do need to ask about article 17 the citizens petition yeah and i just, have them in a different order so 17 is mbta 18 is the citizens petition really yes they sent a warrant this afternoon that's the one that i i just printed it oh you know what maybe it's different from the agenda from the that was circulated the other day that's probably what it is Okay. There there is a draft a draft warrant that says 1029 2024 on it in the MBTA is article 17. Right? And that's the warrant that I have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll look at that one. Okay, I'm confused again. MBTA I too, because it says the planning board recommended. Um, your cat has some opinions, Diane. She she most certainly does. <laughs> but zone, zoning's recommending at special town meeting, though. Yeah, so we really... Okay, so that's what it is. Okay. So I wouldn't take any action if they haven't voted on that. Mm-mm. I feel right about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do we have anything on the citizens petition, Michelle? So um, you do have attendees um, in the audience. You have Paul Kears, whose hand is raised. Um, I believe you have Taffy Nagel, who's calling in. Um, I don't know if, if you'd like me to promote them, allow them to speak. Sure. We can allow them to speak. Okay. Um, Paul, are you able to speak? I can. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Can. Are you on a, a phone where we can see your face or are you on a... Yeah, I am. If um, you promote me to a panelist, I can I can be uh, on video as well. Yep. Thank you. You're, can you you're in, Paul. Paul, I'm also on the phone. I got in through the phone. Okay. All right, well, we'll listen to Paul. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I know I know Taffy is um is on and um she had a a presentation that I think mine would follow hers um okay. a little better in, in that type of order, if that's all right. 
Sure. Paul, okay. um, Taffy indicated that she wasn't able to actually get on, so we provided her with a phone number, and she's dialing in. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm on, Tracy. Okay. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, great, because I can hear all of you. Um, I am here as a proponent of the citizen's petition, uh, which is to amend the Town Manager Act of 2014 in regards to how appointments are made and specifically to upgrade the appointment of the Director of Elder Affairs to the level of where the Select Board has final approval of that appointment, as they do now with the Police Chief, Fire Chief, and Town Accountant. Uh, we have been operating under the current Town Manager Act for 10 years. Paul Carlson, who was Chair of the, board, the Select Board at the time of its implementation, says that it was intended to be a fluid document, not one cast in stone. In the decades since 2014, Cohasset Elder Affairs has grown exponentially, from a small operation in two rooms in the community center to a large, effective, and vibrant organization with several part-time and several full-time and many part-time staff, a large, efficiently run building, and a membership in thousands. As you know, the census of people over 60 in Cohasset makes up 40% of our adult population. The Board of the Directors of the CEA, of which I am a member, and many seniors, which is also me, were extremely upset with the process used to choose the new Director of Elder Affairs. It was not transparent, and the history of growth and the established goals for the future of the CEA and the needs and desires of the seniors involved were totally disregarded. Initially, our, our group asked a member of the Board of Selectmen to put forth a motion asking the Select Board to form a working committee to look at the process of how appointments are made, and in particular relating to the CEA Board, the CEA Director. After some discussion um, at the Select Board meeting, this motion was defeated three to two. At the time, the chairman even commented, you would not be here if a different choice had been made. That might have been true at the moment, but the fallout of this situation has made many people in town realize there is a need to revisit the appointing powers of the town manager. With the select board refusing to look at the process, our only alternative was the citizen's petition. It was drafted by a select board member and cleared by the town council. We had two days to gather the 100 plus signatures required for a special town meeting. We easily gathered 137 signatures. I was absolutely astounded at how strongly the seniors I approached felt about this issue. 201, they felt their wishes and concerns had not been heard. Making this change in the Town Manager Act would give those citizens a voice in decision making and ultimately at the ballot box if we are not satisfied. So I'll turn it over to Paul. Does it, anyone have any questions um, thus far? I don't. No. Okay, so um, so specific to this um, uh, amendment to the Town Managers Act, um, just a, a, a little background to what Tappy had mentioned that um, um, we, we had a, a open position um, and it had been open for nine months. And uh, we've had a, uh, an assistant director um, who um, had been with us for five years and in Hingham for five years prior to that. And, um, you know, she had been filling the role um, of, of the director while being the assistant director as well. So there had been about a nine month period in which we could um, engage with the town manager to find out, you know, what is um, the process uh, to hiring someone and um, what, what are the desires of, uh, of our community um, in picking a new director. So uh, during that process, um, there was um, a lot of areas that needed improvement. Um, and that was kind of uh, borne out where we had a, a large public meeting with the town manager present after he made his decision. Um, and during that process, we, we identified uh, some areas of improvement and we, we went to the board of uh, select, uh, the select board um, to seek 
two remedies. One was um, that we felt that there was um, um, some weaknesses in the process of hiring directors and department heads as a whole in the town of Cohensi. Um, they all agreed um, that that was the case. Um, and they recommended that they would um, work with the human resource uh, director to help uh, redefine how uh, hiring is done, whether we go uh, internally or we post the job publicly, and then who has input and at what part of the process do they have input? And then, you know, where do we stop with the input and move on to some decision making, as is the privilege for the town manager? Uh, so we were all in agreement with that. The second remedy um, that we were looking to um, to correct was we, we we saw there was a weakness in the weighted opinions of the staff, the board, um, and the subcommittees that are directly working in the arena of elder affairs. So um, again, we we went to the select board for that remedy. Um, we we wanted a committee set up to review. Um, how we can have a more weighted opinion in the hiring process. And we, we thought a committee would help us best spend some time over six months to review that and see if there is um, a warranted um, measure to, to change the Town Managers Act. Um, so they voted three to two, not in favor of doing that. So as Taffy mentioned, uh, the only other option we had available is to put forth a, a citizen's petition. Um, so that is what has been done. So the citizen petition simply is requesting an amendment to the Town Managers Act for the purpose of adding the Director of Elder Affairs position to the higher list um, equivalent, um, which is on there now, which is police, fire, and uh, uh, accounting finance director. Um, and that is to a defined process in which there is no single individual making all the decisions. Uh, this is a process that already exists uh, where the town manager, along with the select board, engage fully in the selection process and the hiring process. So they are able to get the opinions of the various boards and the opinion of, of the stakeholders um, and those who are affected by um, selecting a director of elder affairs. So, you know, the question is why, why the change? Um, during the past nine months, at no time did the town manager meet with the board of elder affairs, the staff, or any volunteers directly engaged in providing elder services. He never wants to discuss any views, goals, or new direction or alternative ideas that he may have in selecting a new director. The board met with the current assistant director and staff, uh, our board of, of elder affairs in which I'm a member. Uh, we met with the current staff. We moved um, and met with the assistant director. We moved forward in fully supporting the assistant director to fill the position of director. In addition to that, HR set up a final interview committee, which interviewed uh, in person the three final candidates and they rendered an opinion. And I was on that committee as well. There had been several letters of recommendation and a lot of community support given to the town manager as well. All of these efforts were in support of hiring the assistant director. The town manager chose not to heavily weigh all of these opinions, but instead move the department in a new direction. A direction that was never disclosed until after the hiring decision was made. This single source or silo approach, we believe is not in the best interest of the Department of Elder Services, nor in the best interest of the town of Cohasset. So why is this a good thing for the town? Um, the process under the Town Managers Act has proven to be the most effective in hiring key employees in the town's critical roles that have a profound impact directly on the residents of Cohasset. So those four positions, police, fire, uh, finance, and elder affairs. The town manager stated that his decision was based on finding additional skill sets of a new candidate to have health and human services background. He stated this is the direction we are going as more people are aging in place. In this decision, he unilaterally elevated the role of Director of Elder Affairs to a higher level of importance to the town. In doing so, we feel the change to the Town Managers Act would be required as such a role deserves the input 
from the select board, as well as subject matter experts, the Board of Elder Services, and seniors themselves. As we stated, there are now 40% of our town's population. So the role of the town manager um, elevated is further supported by Governor Healy, who recently filed legislation to change the name of the Council on Aging in the state to now be called the Office of Aging and Independence. And in doing so, started a whole new revamp of the state's um, and the town's level of services geared towards what the town manager stated. In fact, the Director of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh, stated such support as well in agreement with what the town manager has stated. So they plan to have a long-term uh, rollout of services for the aging in place, along with a full network for cities and town to act um, on a daily basis and access. So they're going to be coming to the towns uh, throughout 2025 to now help elevate these roles and elevate these services to people because there's two things that are really plaguing the state right now. That's housing and those aging in place. So as it turns out, the town manager is fully aligned with the process in elevating the director's role and providing us guidance and moving our services forward in concert with the governor's new direction. So whether he intended or not, he is in fully in line with the state's new changes to elder affairs. So we're looking um, for your support to help further what the town manager feels is a very important role in helping us build that role here in Cohasset. And you know, your recommendation um, would go a long way because you're here um, primarily to review articles that are in the best interest of the town. And um, as you know, the, the census comes out only every 10 years. So what had happened in 2020 is when the census came out, it was just overwhelming uh, the amount of um, seniors that we now have in town. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the um, committee, Mike Barclay? Um, hi, good evening. Um, just, just to clarify, if I if I heard you correctly at the end of your presentation, you stated that the town manager was completely in line with the the, the state's mandate, and and so I guess I'm a little confused why, if that's the case, you're not comfortable with him performing the role that you know the 2014 statute um, affords him. Um, so I'm just. I have a couple other questions, but just to maybe start, maybe I didn't hear you correctly, but I thought I heard on the one hand, he's completely in line with the elevated status, health and human services as mandated by the state, but it doesn't sound like you're happy with his decision. And, and I don't know what his side of that is, but maybe if you could start by clarifying that would be really helpful. So, um, um, it's, it's not a mandate from the state. Um, this is something that um, the, the governor uh, feels that uh, revamping the um, uh, the Department of uh, Council on Aging is not reflective of what the times are today. Um, the reason why we, we are looking for a change in this is because the town manager um, solely made all these decisions on his own. There was no input from uh, anyone else. He didn't sit down and engage with anyone else. There was no opportunity for us to discuss this back in you know, March or April or February or June as to what his thoughts were. Why was he heading in this direction? Um, and, and you know, this is really for future um, town managers and future openings uh, when a, a position is available at the uh, Director of Elder Affairs. You know, we're, we're concerned that um, there has to be input from other departments that are weighted. Um, there was no input that was weighted at all in the decision-making process. Okay. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll take your word at that, that there was no, no input. It might, you know, under the statute, though, he acted in the capacity that the 2014 statute afforded him. So, I mean, he certainly didn't do anything wrong. And I, I guess the... Oh, no. Yeah. You know, so no, not at all. So, so you're unhappy with his selection of 
of the you know the new director is that kind of what the genesis of this is no what we're unhappy with is the process um there was um there was no um defined process on how to hire a director there was no process that was equivalent to how we hired other directors um when they posted the job um, they did not have any requirements for any experience in elder affairs services whatsoever um, every department in elder affairs across the state uh, traditionally hires the assistant director it's a position where they um, are in for a period of time uh, they learn they discern and then they move up um, into the position of director um, this was really out of the norm for what happens traditionally in the state of Massachusetts throughout other elder affairs departments. Um, so we're we're saying that um, the process um, that we went through um, did not take uh, any weighted uh, opinions of any of the stakeholders um, in in the town um, in selecting a director for elder affairs. Um, it, it's simply that the town manager um, has uh, the privilege of hiring anyone he wants to at any given time, except for police, fire and finance, which he has to go and work with the select board on the selection process. And we feel that what he stated in public was he wanted to move in the direction of health and human services um, because that's where people are aging in place. And if that's the case, what he's saying is this, this is a more important role than it used to be. And if it's a more important role than it used to be, then I believe that we should have a defined process in which there is a defined level of input from the select board equal to that of the other positions that uh, the select board is privy to. Okay, I'll step aside. Um, I, I'm still not, I'll step aside and maybe come back if, if um, I'll, I'll let others ask questions. Okay, Mary was next. Um, yes. Hi, Paul. Um, Hi. so I am, I am a little concerned, I guess. And one of my questions was going to be Mike's, which was, or was, were you more troubled by the process or the result? Um, I'm, I'm not convinced that this is the right format to try to alter or change the town manager act as it exists right now. Um, I'm also not terribly comfortable that um, we're hearing one, I hate to say it this way, but one side of the story sure. um, that doesn't feel quite kosher to me. Um, when, as Mike stated, he did everything that was in his purview to do. So um, I have some real hesitation with this. So um, uh, the, the outcome of his decision is is um is fine uh, we have a new director uh, we're working very well with the new director and um what we were unhappy about is the process so uh we have a 12 member board um that has been fully engaged for since since the boards were created uh, 20 30 years ago um to to not meet with the board and engage the board in coming up with what he has in his mind, which wasn't disclosed to anyone. If he had come to the board and said, listen, we need to sit down and talk about a, a new direction for elder affairs. I'd like to see someone with health and human services. I would like to see, um, uh, you know, this area grow um, and, and go through that process. Um, he, he never did any of that. So, uh, and he's, he's not required to. Um, so that's what we had is, is that process. So with, at the risk of being um, a little too outspoken, this seems a, a, a little bit like a grievance that has turned into a citizen's petition to me. And, and I don't, again, I don't know that this is the right format in which to resolve the issue, but I will stop talking. And um, if the others don't mind, I would like to push myself to the top and make, make a comment here that this almost feels like an HR issue on way too many levels. And like you are airing a performance review of the town manager when he has really technically done nothing wrong. And it's not, I agree with Mary, this really isn't the right forum for those types of comments. Now, if you want to go about 
adjusting the Town Manager Act that obviously is in your purview to do on a citizen's petition, but I don't think that this is the right venue for what you're trying to accomplish because our purview is mostly reviewing financial matters and making recommendations to the town for that. Um, there's a very weak link between what your concern is and the financial matter matters that are in our purview. Um, we, it, as I said, some of your comments border on performance reviews and that's really not appropriate. I think that you're, it would be better to go to the board of selectmen and put together some kind of a committee to review the town manager act and see where it needs to go from here. So with all of that said, and because I am in the HR industry, um, I would defer to my other members for their comments at this time. So, um, so I, Mark, if I could quickly respond to your ahead. comment. Um, so we, um, we, we, as we stated, we're, we're, we're disagreeing with the process in which um, the, the hiring was, was done. Uh, we did go to the select board and they agreed that the process was was error. Um, so they engaged the HR director to make some changes. And that that's and we're we're happy with that. Um, but what came out of that as well is that um, having a single source um, making decisions without the input from um, direct um, stakeholders and boards um, that 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 process um, we felt um, the only place to to have that process change because they're not going to change that uh, in the process of HR. So, you know, we're not we're not um, unhappy with the town manager's performance. Uh, what we're unhappy with was was a undefined process on hiring the director of elder affairs. Um, you know, we're, we're we have no problem with him making decisions and, and doing what he needs to do for the town. Um, so, and we did go to the board and we did ask them for a um, a committee to be set up to review all of this so that we could air out what is in the best interest. And if that committee decided there was no reason to change the Town Manager's Act, we would have been fine with that decision. Um, but they voted three to two against even doing that. Well, I believe that they're in the process of writing a handbook, which could have some impact on your complaint. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted, um, our opinion to be weighted somehow um, and how they can define that for us is what we're looking for. Okay. All right. And, thank and you. actually, um, Jean, Paul and I are here because we were requested to be here <laughs> because I'm assuming they expect the advisory committee will make some recommendation at the town meeting. You were requested um, to be here because you have an item on the warrant. Yes, yeah. right. All of those, yeah. all of those warrant items get reviewed. But again, advisory typically makes motions and recommendations related to financial matters, not to personnel issues. And I see this kind of as a personnel issue, as an HR issue, definitely. So sure. that that needs to be that needs needs to be looked at, but not in this particular venue. I that's my personal opinion based on my experience of many, 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 many years, and I am a way senior also. So, <laughs> um, so I, some other members have comments, so I'm going to let them speak, and I'm sorry I busted in. Um, so, Mark Maggi. Thanks. Um, actually, I have two, maybe a third thing, so sorry. First, I think it's incorrect to say that the process is undefined. I think the petitioners don't like how it is defined. Mm -hmm. um, a small thing, but a point of clarification, two different numbers were cited. One was that elders are 40% of the town population. Another was that elders were 40% of the town's adult population. Um, that's not an unimportant distinction. So if that could be just, if we could get a single number there, I think that's valuable. Um, well, and third, I'm I getting- Forty percent of the adult population. Forty percent of the adult population. population. Okay, um, I'm getting increasingly uncomfortable with this conversation as it borders into personnel matters. So I don't know. I mean, Jean can correct me. Can I move the question here? Yeah. 
do you think, Mary, my vice chair extraordinaire? Um, I think it makes sense to hear from the other members who have not yet had an opportunity mm -hmm. to speak. Okay, right. that's you fine. Say that, the same thing, but I wasn't I mean, trying to cut anybody off. It just felt no, like we were ordering we'll, into. We'll, we'll summarize at the end, also. Okay. okay. So, Mark Cameron. Yeah. So I, I think it's you know I think we're we're walking a very fine line here administratively, and you know I think that uh, clearly that this there was a decision that was made that wasn't in favor of of uh, elder affairs and. Had it gone a different way, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. But um, I think this is important that you know we have a town manager, we have a town manager act, and we really need to be extremely careful by pulling away duties of the town manager one by one. And we want to be careful as to what precedence this sets for other departments and other organ other parts of town services here. Um, does it become, does it then move to the library and, and who gets what says, what groups get what says about what, uh, what folks are hired. And, and I think that, um, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a group of elder affairs and seniors that are proactively involved. Um, that may not always be the case, right? We may not have always that level of involvement. And I think it's, I think there's an important factor here that we really need to consider and we really need to do this in the correct manner and not you know like someone said <laughs> we're hearing one side of the story here and i think that if we're if there's going to be a significant administrative change that uh, a citizen's petition is is probably not the best route and i, I fully support the elder affairs group having a say in the process, um, and, and I, I, I'm not um, in tune with exact the exact conversations that happened leading up to the event of, and I, I'd be shocked that the elder affairs weren't even consulted at all, and there wasn't some sort of understanding of where the process was going in some conversations, um, and and I would put that on both sides to. To make sure they're having those conversations, but um, in terms of supporting this, I, I I just I think there's a better way to to approach it. Thank you, Diane, and then and then Mike, you can summarize them all. If, yeah. if, if you've noticed, my paw has been up and down the whole the whole entire time because <laughs> I my colleagues are. Um, pretty much summarizing um, what I want to say. I as I want to offer myself up for anybody's um, phone call or a conversation because not only do I have a lot of um, private sector personnel HR experience, but I was on the select board for 12 years. Um, and this is, a, I feel very strongly about both the Town Manager Act, um, what we went through an 18 month study committee um, eight or nine years ago to make a very minor modification in the town manager act. So I'm very um, reluctant to support any move to that. Um, I also want to say that the way the, the positions that are in there, um, the select board typically is not involved in the hiring process for the police chief, the fire chief. They have a final they have an opportunity to deny the the choice that's made by the town manager. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But I will also ask you to think about how that hasn't always been a very easy thing. Um, yeah. it, it, it has politicized um, those hires, um, especially the police chief and fire chief, and has led to some very unfortunate, very good hires in the in the in the long run, but some really unfortunate um political and politicization of the process. So I'm gonna shut up there. Um, I, I you know, concur with my colleagues. I, I'm not inclined to support this. Mike? Uh, my comments have been articulated by my colleagues. I, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. So. I, I, would, I would like to thank um, everyone here for those comments. Um, 
Uh, we do um, respect everyone's opinion. This is something we looked forward to doing um, with a committee. Um, so uh, basically in the last seven or eight minutes, we've, we've pretty much got the committee here um, of opinion that we were looking for to see um, if, if it would warrant changing the Town Managers Act. So I greatly appreciate all of your input because it is very valuable to us. Okay, thank you. I think that the consensus here is that we are not going to support it, but I don't know if you maybe want to withdraw it so we wouldn't recommend against it. So mm -hmm. I would have, uh, yeah, I would have to consult with the petitioner who filed the petition. Um, okay. and, so we're uh, not going, we're not going to take any action tonight, Paul. Okay. But you okay. Chat with your people and okay. see what they say, and they certainly could have watched this whole conversation if sure. they chose to, and maybe they will get some little tidbit. Absolutely. Out of the conversation and realize why we felt it was important not not for us to be making this making this decision sure and i i, I was I'm, I'm happy to hear um you're engaged in the hr community so um oh, or that, that is 45, that is, well, 45 yeah. long <laughs> i i miss i miss Miriam, uh to be honest with you yeah. um but um I, I i will say that um they are working um uh, with the HR director. She's doing a great job trying to get all of this stuff up to speed. And um, again, you know, like you stated, uh, every department is different. Everyone has a different board or committee that helps them. Um, so it's not a one size fits all. Um, but, um, you know, like I said, uh, we, we we have some folks that are interested in, in, in getting a weighted opinion. So if that weighted opinion comes in a different manner, it comes in a different manner, uh, but that's that's the goal. Okay, great. Thank you. So thank you very uh, much. Appreciate your time. Communicate with the town manager's office on whether or not you want to withdraw or whether or not you want to continue, but we're not taking any action at this point. Okay. Okay. So we'll get with um, Tracy is who our contact has been so far. Sure. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank, much. All of you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So do we want to make a motion to that? to not take action on the citizens petition. I think we probably need to do that, but I don't think it needs to be in the warrant. All right. Um, just noticing minute when I was reviewing minutes from May 15th, when we were debating the town hall item in the Capitol, we did take a motion to not decide anything right. that particular that was basically no act, to take no action you know, i mean since so, we've spent you know 30 minutes on this perhaps that's warranted i don't it's only going to be recorded in the minutes though sure so do i can i have a motion to um support not taking action on the citizens petition at this time at this time so moved okay so Diane. second and who made the second? Sorry. Mark. Mark Matty. And roll call, please. Mike Barclay. Uh, Mike Barclay, aye to no action at this time. Okay. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Uh, Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. And Gina Stino, aye. And, and Jane, just I probably should have said this before we voted, but my distinction in at this time, if the petitioners do leave it on the warrant, I I feel like we have an obligation to town meeting to actually take a recommendation vote, um, which we can do. We'll see what we'll see what they decide. I think there's a different method for the process, and I don't think this is it. Just saying. So. Just my humble opinion. Um, and as I said, it, it felt a little bit like a performance review, which he did nothing wrong. He he followed the rules of the Town Manager Act as it exists. So, and it's not up to us to decide whether he did anything wrong, but it was pretty clear to all of us. So that's all. Okay, so um, Article 4, 
we wanted to just have a quick recap and not take action on that. We can do it at our next meeting, um, which let's just go over that now. Um, can everybody be available next week? Next week would be the end before the warrant is published. So we can have a meeting November 6th or November 13th, but whatever we decide November 13th wouldn't get into the warrant. It would be in the motions at the day of town meeting. I'm available next week. Me too. I am as well. Should be, yeah. Yeah, I am not. Okay. All right, so I'll just, I'll just circulate something and see if we have a quorum for that week. If, if we don't have a quorum, would people be available the following week on November 6th, I'm sorry, no, November 13th? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, that would be a Wednesday as usual. Yeah. Okay. All I right. actually am going with Paul Kearse to the U.S. Marine Corps annual luncheon. <laughs> so yeah. it might not be fully. <laughs> okay, so let's just take a quick look at Article 4, and then we'll maybe adjourn. <laughs> we do have minutes, Jean, if you want to get to yeah. those. I don't know. No, I do want to. I do want to do that, and I have an outline of what we have. We're only missing a couple, so. We might as well take action on the ones we have. So number four, this warrant's getting bigger every week, I swear. Oh, allocation of funds for one-time costs. Michelle, do you know anything about the ones that are highlighted on the copy of the warrant that we have? Are they not? Okay, airlifting bags was, are you still there, Michelle? I'm here, yep. Okay. So that was removed from capital and moved into one-time costs. Yep, and moved to this one. Uh, future structure of town government for 50 so, Yep. Um, so they're looking to conduct a study with the Collins Center to see what the future of government will look like as they are looking at the town hall project. They're okay. trying to see if they can right size the space that we need with um, government of the future. Okay. And then the other items were already here. Open space and recreation plan, rental inspection program, repairs for docks, floats, and other equipment, and electric charging stations. So um, I'm guessing that those are pretty far along in the discussion process. Well, it looks like we voted all but item, but project number six already. Right. But I just wanted to make sure that we're like all on the same page on what's going on on this page. So, Diane, you had a question? Yeah, my only question, because we I didn't think about asking it last week, was um, what what we have for free cash. Um, I I mean I'm I assume we have enough to cover the costs. Yeah, so we're 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 just estimating at this at this point. Um, within the next week or two, we'll have um, a number from our consultants as to what free cash should come in at. Um, we won't have a certified free cash number until right before, um, special town meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. So that won't happen before next week at the earliest and possibly at almost at town meeting. So, okay. So, um, we do have minutes to approve and Couple of, one set is very old, May 15th. And I do have them here if anybody has any questions, but you had received these quite a while ago, like in May. So I don't know if you even remember them. But do we want to just go ahead and approve them? Leontina's great on the minutes. She <laughs> she catches everything. I I'm would happy. make a motion to approve the minutes from May 15th, 2024. Second. Okay, roll call. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. And Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Okay. The next is was just um, circulated today, and it was from Mary, 
on the motions that we made last minute at town meeting in the spring. It's very simple. So if you don't have, if you don't have the copy or you haven't had a chance to look at it, it was. Gene, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I actually just realized I was not at the May 15th meeting, so I should have probably abstained from that vote. Okay. All right. Um, I knew there was one I missed back in the spring, but it's that was a long time ago. <laughs> no, you know what? You were late because you were getting somebody a gift. Oh, okay. That, well, that was the town. That was the town meeting meeting. Right. It was town. Oh, was oh, right, right, right. Yes. Jeez. Yeah, it was town it feels meeting. Like it was like yesterday and a hundred years ago, all at the same time. Yeah, but I think you might have been there for the vote. You, yes, you, I was. You You're came right. at yes. six fifty. Okay. So my my vote can stand. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. So it was just um, on Article Eight, Capital Improvement Budget, Item Eighteen, Town Hall Roof discussion on the three twenty five thousand proposed for repair of the Town Hall Roof. Mike Barclay made a motion to approve. Fran Collins seconded, and then Diane, Mark, and Mark joined the meeting just about the time that we were making our move. <laughs> and then there was also Article 25, Citizens Petition for Town Hall Rehab. Discussion followed regarding the proposed motion to allocate 650,000 to be spent. Um, Diane made a motion not to approve the motion. And Mark, you seconded that one. So do we want to approve these minutes? So moved. Second. Need the second? Yep, Mark. Mark Cameron. Okay. Um, Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, aye. And Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Okay, so those are done, June 3rd. Um, Jean, Leontina just put something in the chat that you must, I think you forgot to say I regarding the minutes of May 15th. Okay, May 15th, Jean Estino, I, I thought I did. And then did I, I okay, and June 3rd, Jean Estino, I, just in case. Um, so I don't have July 9th because it is in a pile of papers and I am doing that. That was for the joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen for um, year-end transfers. And I will have that for the next meeting. Um, next is October 9th. Let me just see. So, I mean, that was more of the same of what we're doing now, review of all warrant articles for special town meeting, approval of minutes, which we didn't do. And let's see. Article 8, revolving fund, Article 7, and the region, the South Shore Boke Tech presentation was in that, in that article. And then the citizens petition, but nobody came to that, to speak to us to that. So... Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 9th, 2024? So moved. Second. Is that Mark again? Yep, camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mary McGoldrick. Mary McGoldrick, I. And Gina Stino, I. Okay, so that is all we have for today. And thanks, Lee and Tina, for making me honest. Um, I appreciate that. We can all use a little help sometimes. So I think that that's it. Um, So I'm going to see if we have a forum for next week. And if we do, there will be a meeting. And I will let you know as soon as possible. I hate to put it off till the 13th because there is a holiday at the beginning of that week. And if we don't post it in time, it doesn't happen. So um, I would accept a motion to adjourn at 8.53. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mark and Mark. Mark and Mark. OK. Roll call, please. Diane Kennedy. Diane Kennedy, aye. Mark Cameron. Mark Cameron, aye. Mark Maggi. Mark Maggi, aye. Mary McGoldrick. 
Mary McGoldrick I. Mike Barclay. Mike Barclay I. And Gina Stino I. Happy thank you. birthday, Mark. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Mark. Mark. Thank and you. Thank, thank you, Michelle. Mark, mine's in 10 days. So I wish you a happy birthday and you could do the same in 10 days. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. And thank you, Lee and Tina, if you're still listening. I'm Hi, sure everybody. you are. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.